the FWA. New school, my ass. It should fit there because. I'm going to make a belly as from what Joe Williams has got. You have found any of it. You have found any of it. Shoot, shoot, shoot. It suits him. It suits him. It's mine. It's my belt. What does it jump like Joe Williams? He hasn't got a belt to hold the belt off. Hey, Drew, come on. Let's not kid ourselves here. The experience and the, the finesse and the tenacity of this team right here, right now. I mean, if I wrestle Joe Williams' team up, I'm not going to need more than 15 minutes to, to take the fellow out. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a big deal. No, they are. The only people who are making this a big deal are those idiots in the FWA. This new, old, old school, new school. But the bottom line is, we are the old school. And we are the best. And we are the best. We are proven professionals yeah. throughout the whole of the world who can actually get down and take people out. So exactly. Of course. Of course, I've said it before, like can't I say? Wise men learn more from faults than faults from wise men. Is that right? That's right, that's right. So, wise men, teach this fault, pain, and teach it under 15 minutes. Thomas 
really putting the pressure on the back, the arms, on the knees, but his shoulders were down. Referee Andrew Coyne counting George Castano's shoulders down on the mat. That's, that's good officiating, if, if a little pedantic, Andrew, I must say. But George Castano is now giving the boots to, to Brandon Thomas. Thomas thought he found himself some rest right in the corner, but Castano is right back on it. George Castano may be alone here tonight, but Brandon Thomas isn't, as well as the power of the crowd, the hundreds of Brandonites behind him. He's also got Ian Disciple and his spiritual advisor, Capo Khan, there at ringside. It's three on one, it's 103 on one. It's Brandon Thomas against George Castano. It's the Messiah against the Colombian. I never thought I'd ever say that in my career, but I have. Those words have escaped my mouth, and will the world be the same after that? Brandon on top now, back in the ring with George Castano, a side Russian leg sweep, taking Castano down onto the mat, driving his head into the canvas. There's pain in his head like it's been wrapped in a crown of thorns. Brandon will know all about that. George Castano is just finding out. to the midsection of George Castano, like the spear in the side which drew only water. Today, Brandon Thomas's pin count attempt draws only a two. Punches to the midsection of George Castano and one to the face. Thomas is winding up, but Castano is too wily for that. He sent Thomas to the outside, and Capo Khan is down as well. There's Ian Disciple in the shiniest of trousers, and he's been taken down by George Castano. Capo Khan and Ian Disciple were taken down by George Castano, flying through the ropes, a spit by a dive by Castano. But Thomas wasn't there. Thomas had vanished, only to be reappear three feet later, three feet away. There he was, and now he's taking George Castano into the crowd. Fan cam following them as best they can. They're out at the merchandise store. They're out by the exit, and George Castano whipping, being whipped rather. It's hard to see with fan cam, it's very dark. We must tell our fans to purchase better equipment because it's a little dark out there. And there is fan cam following George Castano and Brandon Thomas. They're out in the fans. Brandon Thomas taking the action to the people. He'll be feeding them later. He's got a loaf and a couple of fishes backstage, and I thought he'll be feeding the people. But today, he's entertaining them with George Castano. He's taking the lifeless, limp body around. He's showing them. It's a miracle. Can he bring that lifeless, limp body back to life like Lazarus? I don't know. Perhaps it's best for him that he doesn't. He needs a three count here. Brandon Thomas needs to secure a win over George Castano. He has a win over him in tag team competition. We saw that in this show a few weeks ago as Thomas in Disciple beat Los Bros Castano, Los Hermanos Castano, the Colombian connection. But Castano's up and he's thrown in Disciple into the ropes. Thomas is down, the, the royal jewels, the jewels of the king of the jewels, that's the royalty connection there, have been sent down to the right, and oh, a huge super back suplex released, and Thomas is down, it's a three count, Castano has the win, it's a one, two, three, George Castano has beaten Brandon Thomas, despite the help of Disciple and Khan, it's Castano who's the winner. Brandon Thomas may indeed look like a false messiah because he's failed to win today. And Castano refusing to turn the other cheek with referee Andrew Coyne. Castano is the winner. Thomas is the loser. The Colombian connection has beaten the Christian connection here tonight on Frontier TV. Am I going to hell for all this blasphemy? Probably. Let's take a look at what went down on Frontier Wrestling a couple of weeks ago. It seemed as though the old school in the shape of Dino Scarlo and Drew McDonald were inviting Doug Williams to join their ranks, only for them to introduce Robbie Brookside, who claimed he was the true British heavyweight champion. 
Williams was then attacked by McDonald and Brookside and Scarlo as they ran off with the British heavyweight belt. Brookside demanded a match to prove he was better than Williams. We'll see that tonight on this very television show, starting right now. As you see, Ronnie Brookside in the ring. He's there, he's representing the old school. He wants to do it the proper way, as well as doing it the wrong way. He's already in possession of the belt. He now wants the title. He's gonna face off against that man there, Doug, the anarchist Williams. This is title action, and it has a rather unique stipulation. There is a 15 minute time limit on this match. Robbie Brookside has decided that he only needs minutes to beat Doug Williams. Overconfident, perhaps, cocky, I'm sure it is, but Robbie Brookside is sure of his ability. I've seen him face some of the best in this business. He holds a pinball victory over Chris Jericho. He's faced the top stars in Japan. He's wrestled with William Regal. Indeed, he was a tag partner of William Regal in their early days in this sport. Robbie Brookside is a wily ring veteran, but Doug Williams is no slouch either. This one could be a match classic. They know each other very, very well. They have similar technical wrestling skills. They're all that is great about the wrestling business in this country. It's just a shame that Robbie Brookside has chosen to align himself with the dastards of the old school. Just feeling each other out in the early stages of this match. It's tentative. Neither man wanting to give too much away. Robbie Brookside with a side headlock, really cranking that down. The pressure on the head of Doug Williams must be incredible, but he's got to regain his thoughts. He can't think about the pain. He's got to find a way out of this hole, and he's done it. He's twisting out. He's turned the side headlock into a wrist lock. It's a top wrist lock. And now it's Robbie Brookside's time to feel pain, but he too has reversed the top wrist lock into a standing wrist lock. Doug Williams rolls through, trying to escape, finds himself in a hammerlock, but now he's got a wrist lock on of his own. This exhibition of wrestling skills continues after the break. in the FWA. He's ambushed Doug Williams repeatedly, stealing his belt, stealing his honour, and now he wants to steal his title. But let me tell you, Doug Williams doesn't go down so easy. Brookside may be on top for now, but we've seen Williams come back from blow after blow against bigger opponents than Robbie Brookside. It's experience that counts tonight for Brookside as Williams rolls through. A double leg takedown into a bridge almost gets a three count on Robbie Brookside and he's calling for a timeout in the corner but not playing by the same rules. Williams was willing to give him that timeout but Brookside broke the covenant, he broke the promise and at once again ambushed Doug Williams. This man has no honour, this man is nothing about the rules, he's nothing about the spirit of wrestling. This is why we hate the old school. They claim to be taking it back to tradition, but all they're doing is taking us back to the Stone Age, where it's dog eat dog, and they claim to be the biggest dogs in the yard. Brookside now using the steel barriers as a weapon in his arsenal against Doug Williams. But Williams is back. Williams is angry, and like the Incredible Hulk, you won't like him when he's angry. A snap suplex on the outside on that thin coating of Matt 
let me tell you, that won't have been much comfort to the spine of Robbie Brookside as it jarred out the open floor. But Brookside is back up, a kick to the face of Williams, and now he throws him back in the ring, taunting the fans. Brookside means business here, here tonight. He's the chosen man of the old school. I'd hate to think what would happen if he doesn't get the job done, because they're ruthless. He knows all about it himself. I'm sure in the back of his mind, though, must be what's going to happen if I don't beat Doug Williams tonight. Where do I stand in the old school? Snapmare takedown and a rear chin lock. He's locking up the arms and going for the wrist. He's bending back that wrist, putting all the pressure on the wrist of Doug Williams. A lesser man would be quitting right now. Referee Andrew Coyne just checking, just making sure that he knows Doug Williams well enough to know that Williams is not going to quit from this. He's not going to give up. And Williams has bent the arm back in. He's taken some of the pressure off his wrist. And now he rolls through. He's got a knee bar. Almost, almost put the knee bar on, on Brookside, but Brookside made the ropes. And once again, while Williams was moving away, allowing Robbie Brookside the time to recover, Brookside was up on his feet and not playing by the rules. This is a different Doug Williams we're seeing here tonight. This is a Doug Williams more in the spirit of what we believe in the FWA. Oh! Oh, as Robbie Brookside's feet driven into the face of Doug Williams. Doug Williams has come to embody the FWA over recent weeks. This is a fight he did not want to be in. Old school versus new school. He didn't care a jot for either of them. He, he walked his own path. He was a lone wolf, but he's been drawn in by the despicable actions of the old school. And you know what? I think he's beginning to, to like being a part of the FWA at last. He's now becoming a worthy champion for us. His in-ring skills have always proved that, yes, he is a worthy champion, a worthy holder of the FWA belt, but now he's beginning to espouse the attitude that means everything to the FWA fans and the FWA wrestlers. It's taken a man like Robbie Brookside, a despicable charlatan like Robbie Brookside, to bring him round to that way of thinking. I just hope it's not costly. Repeated forearms by Williams off the top, sends Brookside reeling, Brookside back in, a boot taking him down, and a huge elbow drop off the top rope by Doug Williams. There's a cover. Only a two count by referee Andrew Coyne. He's explained to Doug that it was only a two count. Coyne may make mistakes, but he's one of the fairest men in the business. And now Williams is back up, forearms and boots to the midsection of Robbie Brookside, sending him down into the corner. And now Williams is lording it over Brookside. He's enjoying it now. He's back on top. Huge back suplex driving the base of Robbie Brookside's neck into the canvas. He barely kicks out on two. The pendulum has swung again. It's now Doug Williams who's back on top. It's champion versus challenger, and the champion is in the ascension. I spoke too soon because Brookside is back again. This one is so back and forth, I can barely keep up. These are two men on top of their game, and a superplex drives Williams into the mat. Look at the pain etched on his face. He's like someone grabbed an etcher sketch and badly, barely recognisably managed to write the word pain on it. That is what we can see on the face of Doug Williams here tonight as Brookside goes for a kind of it's a modified STF manoeuvre. He's hooked the legs and it's... He's, he's got a front face lock on Doug Williams, forearms to the back of the head. That pressure on the lower back and on the neck of Williams must be incredible. Coyne, once again, in the face of a champion, asking him if he wants to quit. I hope he doesn't, because I'm enjoying this now. This one is just getting warmed up. It's Williams versus Brookside. 
It's a hell of a match as Williams makes it to the rope. Brookside forced to break, but no, a boot to the back of the head. Robbie Brookside is not playing by the rules. There are two ways to win this, the nice way and the hard way. And it looks like Robbie Brookside has chosen the hard way. He's going to break every rule in the book, at least every rule that Andrew Coyne lets him get away with. Robbie Brookside has chosen that path, and God help him for what may befall him on it. But there we have a, a side belly-to-belly -belly suplex driving Williams down onto the mat as Brookside gets back up. He needs to cover the champion, but he's too, he's too concerned with, with taunting the fans in the front row. We've got Wolfman, we've got Scoodle, Captain Donut, they're all there. They're our regular fans, and they may prove to be one of Doug Williams' greatest weapons tonight because they've got inside the head of Robbie Brookside. And the reversal of the Irish whip and a knee into the chest of Robbie Brookside in the corner. Doug Williams drops him. Only a two count again. It's getting closer though. Those twos are becoming two and a half. And the two and a half are becoming two and three quarters. How long until we get two and 15, 16 and that vital last fraction. Sunset flip over the top by Doug Williams. But Brookside's feet are on the rope. But Williams is really on top now. Every time I say that, the pendulum swings the other way because now it's Robbie Brookside with that unorthodox but effective manoeuvre who has got control of the match again. He's up, he may be breathing heavily, but he's breathing. I'm sure the same cannot be said for Doug Williams. He, he must be drawing on his reserves now, his emergency fuel tank as Brookside takes him to the top. He's eager to end this now. He's got, he's got minutes left of his 15 minutes that he insisted upon. And a headbutt by Doug Williams, taking Robbie Brookside down. Williams is up, Williams is down. The bomb scare knee drop, driven into the back of Robbie Brookside's head. Surely, only a two count again. Doug Williams can't believe it. He's asking Coyne to count quicker, but Coyne can't count any quicker. He's counting fairly, and Robbie Brookside is showing fright unbecoming of the old school. They're a dastardly lot. They're a rum lot. I said that before that he's a charlatan, but he's showing fight. He's a fighting charlatan, a battling dandy. And Doug Williams, German suplex with a bridge gets only a two count again. Robbie Brookside is in a war and Doug Williams is in control of that war. If this were, if this were World War II, he'd have one of those sticks pushing those tanks around on a map. But as it is, this is wrestling. He's in a ring and he's taking it to Robbie Brookside. But Brookside's coming back. A couple of forearms of his own and a cross arm backlash. The cross arm backlash. That's Robbie Brookside's own finisher. He's Brookside closer if you will. He's taken Doug Williams down, but he's too tired himself to make the count. The minutes are eking away. There is not much time left in this match. How a unique 15 minute time limit. The sands of time are drawing down. There is not much time left, certainly not enough sand left to build a castle. And it's that castle which Robbie Brookside wants to storm. That's where the belt, that's where the title is being held. Robbie Brookside, he's got the catapult, he's got the cauldron to all the boiling oil. He's storming over the walls, but Doug Williams is fighting back with the spirited, spirited resolve. A roll up, only a two count again. It looks as though Doug Williams' castle walls are safe, but you never know. Does Robbie Brookside have a Trojan horse? Can he get inside Doug Williams' castle? Can he get inside the walls? And at the risk of stretching a metaphor, can he make the city the, the keep his own? 30 seconds remaining in this match. The timekeeper is getting as excited as you or I. He knows he may be called into action in just a few seconds' time if this one can't find a resolution. Reversal of an Irish whip. It's Brookside in the corner. He's met with an elbow. There's the revolution, DDT. Revolution, revolution, revolution. There's a cover. Two. Brookside kicks out, but the time limit has expired. 
And there's the old school. There is Flash Barker. There is Creed. There is Slash of the boys. They've invaded the ring. Forget what Robbie Brookside did here tonight. They put the exclamation point on it tonight. I wonder how Robbie Brookside feels. Were they waiting there at the back all the time? It looks like they had no confidence that he would get the job done as Williams takes out Slash with the revolution. He takes out Creed with the revolution DDT. There's only one man left standing. That's Flash Barker, the former Mr. Blonde, formerly Alex Shane, head of security. He too gets a revolution DDT for his troubles. Doug Williams is still the FWA British heavyweight champion. Robbie Brookside has failed. It looks like the old school have washed their hands of him already. He failed in his task. The 15 minute time it was his undoing. I'm not sure that he would have completely kicked out of the revolution DDT anyway. Andrew Coyne raising the arm of the champion. Doug Williams is still champion. The new school have won the, won the battle here tonight, but have they won the war? Doug Williams is there. He knows he's still champion. He's not happy in the way that he's done it. It's a time limit victory of a kind. It's officially a draw. He'll go into the books. This one's over. I'll see you next week.